All right, good morning, everyone. Thank you for the lovely introduction. Thanks for the invitation and the opportunity to be able to speak to such a uh, distinguished audience about an issue which I believe is in the heart and the daily routine of, of uh, each and one of us. Now, um, this section is supposed to be setting the stage to further more detailed uh, presentation than discussion, so uh, let's set the stage. Uh, let's consider um, several cases. The first case is about a young, recently graduate pharmacist who receives a prescription for simvastatin, 20 milligrams, and while reviewing his uh, dis dispensed uh, prescriptions at the end of uh, his shift, he realizes that he had actually dispensed the simvastatin, 10 milligrams. You can, you can imagine the look on his face. Second case is about a five-year-old epileptic child whose parents were prescribed um, the Palept solution, which is a valproic acid-based uh, product, dosing 3.3 milliliters three times daily. Only it appears that the physician's intention was to prescribe the, the Palept syrup, which is five times less concentrated than the solution which was actually um, prescribed and dispensed. Now, this child eventually consumed the dosage, which is five times higher than the recommended one. Uh, he was hospitalized with uh, altered consciousness, blurred vision, and nausea, vomiting, and uh, valproic acid blood levels approaching 140 micrograms per milliliter, which is uh, way above the recommended uh, threshold. He was treated symptomatically and discharged three days later. Now, these two cases have uh, mainly three things in common. First, they are both real cases. Second, they both um, relate, though in different aspects, different severities, to the issue of uh, medication errors. And third, <clears throat> they both involved the same person, the same pharmacist for that matter, which happens to be me. The first case is my first uh, dispensing error as a young pharmacist. And the second valproic acid case is the one who was in, uh, in charge for investigating the case, which happened in one of our pharmacies. Now, of course, this is just a tiny example <clears throat> for a much broader uh, issue. There are a lot of types of medication errors besides prescribing and dispensing errors, such as uh, monitoring errors, administration errors, compliance errors, et cetera, et cetera. Theodore Roosevelt once said, what we actually all know today, everyone, everyone makes mistakes, uh, except those who do nothing, of course. And still, <clears throat> errors cost us. They cost us lives, they cost us quality of lives, and yes, they even cost us money, and lots of money. Um, medication errors account for as much as 10% of all medical errors worldwide, with millions of people affected each year, uh, millions of preventable adverse events, and uh, a global expenditure amounting up to nearly 100 billion, billion dollars a year. 100 billion dollars, no sweat, it's about 10% of the entire expenditure on, on, on health world, worldwide. Uh, the problem is that apparently this is just, just the tip of the iceberg since merely 20% of uh, medication errors are actually reported. Now, the WHO has recently um, declared its intention to fight this phenomenon and reduce the burden of medication errors worldwide by approximately 50% uh, in the next few years. We all remember the remarkable uh, document of the U.S. Uh, Institution of Medicine to, to err is uh, human from 1999, which was a real turning point. Actually, it was the first document to really focus and highlight uh, the, uh, the issue of patient safety in, in general and medication, uh, the inappropriate use of medications in a particular with some outstanding numbers from, from the U.S. Tens of thousands of, of uh, death cases a year, making it a, lead, a leading uh, cause of death with $21 billion expenditure uh, to the American healthcare system. Similar numbers are reported also from, from the U.K. This is uh, last year's uh, report of the NHS. 22,000 deaths attributed to uh, medication errors uh, annually with 1.6 billion pounds expenditure to the British healthcare system. So what is medication error anyway? Uh, there are many definitions, uh, slight different um, semantics, but they all um, relate to quite about the same thing. It's any preventable event that may cause or lead to inappropriate medication use <coughs> or patient harm, whether it, it is conducted by the patient himself, a family member, a healthcare giver, and so on. Einstein once said that uh, not everything that counts can be counted, and vice versa. Not everything that can be counted actually counts. So uh, I hope that we all do believe that medication errors both count and can be counted. The question is how? What is the best way to measure <coughs> the cost of medication errors? Um, and before that, we have to answer several other questions. First, <coughs> on which cost 
uh, which costs are we taking into consideration? Uh, is it direct costs, like the direct uh, derived cost from, from the error and treating the uh, specific error? Um, maybe indirect costs, like um, infrastructure costs and the patient's uh, loss of productivity, the societal loss of productivity, etc. Another question but is uh, which methodology should we uh, endorse? <coughs> uh, should we rely on retrospective data, which is easy, easier to, to achieve and uh, rely on, but it, it, uh, it has the disadvantages of, of a retrospective uh, design, such as uh, lacking data and uh, invalidated data, etc. Or should we rely on prospective cross-sectional design, <coughs> which uh, allows us um, more validated data, but is m more time-consuming and uh, more expensive? Or maybe should we combine these two? I think uh, Professor uh, Pizza mentioned it in his um, remote presentation, um, the importance of validated data. Maybe we should combine several methods in order to get a more relatively good validated data and introduce it as an input to an, econo an, an economic model, <coughs> which I will show shortly. And of course, of which, which perspective? <coughs> Is it the patient's perspective? Is it my perspective as a, as a uh, insurer, as a payer? Societal uh, perspective, and so on. This is just uh, one example. There have been several um, studies examining the cost of uh, medication errors. Uh, with a big variance in terms of the methods uh, which were employed, the perspectives, uh, the types of costs which were uh, addressed and measured. Uh, this specific uh, systematic review included 21 uh, studies, of which the high majority, about 81%, um, addressed and calculated only direct, direct costs. Uh, and within these direct costs, there is also a big uh, variation to which costs were, were actually uh, measured. This is just an illustration. <coughs> the ticks here represent the cost, <coughs> the cost the section that w was actually um, addressed and uh, measured. You can see that most of the studies uh, measure the medication cost and the um, hospital admission uh, cost. But uh, the, the main uh, issue here is the high variance <coughs> between studies. We have to realize that <coughs> our final goal is to intervene, to, to um, offer some kinds of interventions. And interventions also cost us, uh, cost us money. For example, um, pharmacy medication reconciliation, which works magnificently well in Meuchedet nowadays. Um, electronic prescribing uh, systems, drug-drug interaction, interaction uh, alerting systems, <coughs> and uh, even a robotic pharmacy which Mohedet has the privilege to be the first HMO in Israel to introduce a community robotic uh, uh, pharmacy. Uh, we already have the second one and more to come. So I believe that the, a very good solution, good, a very good way is to uh, use um, a model, a model which is a simplified uh, structure to describe a more complex uh, natural systems. Uh, we, we know it from the field of cost effectiveness when comparing two or more technologies. So why <coughs> shouldn't we also um, use this concept uh, for um, introducing interventions to, to fight the phenom phenomena of uh, medication errors? <coughs> we can have, <coughs> if we have a good structured, um, appropriate desi appropriately designed um, model which uses good validated data in terms of rates of, s of specific uh, medication errors, we can and we can then um, put it into probabilities. We can uh, choose and calculate the appropriate costs and introduce it as input uh, to the model. We can make a much wiser decisions um, relative to just merely uh, deciding from, from a gut feeling. We have several examples from Mukhelet. This is, uh, for example, a, a Cardiff model <coughs> for uh, cost effectiveness of depagliflozine as a second line treatment after uh, metformin failure. Uh, here we were, like, we were able to calculate the, the total cost of a specific macro and microvascular complications and we could assign the probabilities and the total cost of uh, selected adverse events of each uh, drug uh, compared and uh, to calculate the, the, the cost effectiveness uh, ratio. 
Another example is a uh, drug-drug interaction uh, software we, we were uh, considering to, to purchase uh, instead of the, the existing uh, software. And this, um, this model uh, eventually calculated <coughs> a potential cost saving of roughly 25,000 hospital hospitalization days, accounting to $13 million a year. Not bad. This is another example from uh, Australia. It's a, an Australian study that uh, examined the cost effectiveness analysis of electronic uh, prescribing uh, versus uh, paper based uh, pres prescribing. Um, it's a simple uh, tree dec um, decision tree model, but it allows to <coughs> calculate the probabilities for uh, specific uh, adverse uh, events and, and uh, specific errors. Uh, the probabilities whether this error was intercepted or not intercepted, and and the uh, cost of the co of uh, of uh, the sequel of not intercepting the error. This is just uh, to illustrate the model calculates the probabilities and the specific costs, and eventually it can uh, calculate the ICER, the incremental cost effectiveness ratio, which in that this case uh, show the dominance of the electronic system, which was <coughs> more effective and and uh, cost less. So a model can also help us manage uncertainty. Um, and uh, as I said, it is a, a, it is a good way uh, to take a wiser decisions, which can turn out to be quite, quite good ones, uh, instead of just a gut feeling. Now in the last couple of minutes, I, would, I was asked to, to speak about conflicting interests. I think Irene uh, addressed this uh, issue. Of course, we have a conflicting interest in terms of reporting, reporting um, medication errors. We have a lot of players in this game, a lot of stakeholders. We have the um, professional healthcare giver, which, uh, which, if you try to to go into his uh, into his mind, he's thinking about, <coughs> okay, I have my professional uh, prestige here uh, on the stake. Um, and nothing happened, um, I'll learn from, from my mistake and it, it will not occur again. Uh, we have a uh, Ministry of Health which uh, sets the rules and uh, the procedures, but we, we do feel that, uh, like there is, is a lack of closing the circle, okay? Like uh, uh, there's still a gap between um, the procedures and the rules and, and active and proactive uh, monitoring and control. Uh, there is the payer, which is like Mujer, the HMOs. Um, we have our own uh, perspectives. Um, we have to consider uh, an internal investigation, external investigation, and reporting to the, um, to the regulator and also to our down, downstream to our uh, healthcare professionals. And in the middle of this, there is the patient himself which must be think, thinking, okay, why, I have enough on my own, uh, enough problems, uh, I don't need these medication errors now, I'll just go and sue all, everybody. Uh, so, of course, what we need here is a multi-directional communication, a transparency in data. I'm not saying it, it is easy, we have to think together about the best ways to do so, um, maybe uh, combining um, quality measures with some um, incentives of, of reporting to do it the appropriate way uh, so the entire system uh, can come out beneficial. So to conclude, an error is always around the corner. We have to acknowledge it but never to accept it. Uh, as I said, cooperation and reporting and transparency of data is crucial <coughs> among all stakeholders. A systematic evaluation of both the problem, which is the medication error, and possible interventions uh, is, um, is, is needed, and uh, this also will allow us to manage uh, possible conflicting interests. If I'm not mistaken, one of today's presentations <coughs> will also discuss the issue of um, return or investment of some interventions uh, to fight medication errors. So um, I wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Enjoy the lovely city of uh, Tel Aviv and the rest of the symposium.